There are questions surrounding the colleagues of a pediatrician accused of a series of horrifying crimes. Dr. Earl Bradley was charged with molesting more than 100 young patients at his Delaware practice. And as chief legal correspondent Jan Crawford reports, this type of crime may be more common than you think. The case of Dr. Earl Bradley follows a pattern. Whispers in the community, sporadic complaints to authorities, no action. She just came out and said, why did Dr. Bradley kiss my tongue? And so you called the police. We called the police that day. She is one of a half dozen parents we interviewed who say their children were molested and asked their identities so be concealed. The state prosecutors felt that there wasn't enough evidence um, to to charge him or to go in with a search warrant. Um, it, it was, I mean, it was devastating. The shock and anger that has cast a dark cloud over this town is not confined to Lewis, Delaware. In doctor's offices in other towns and other cities across America, there are predators who parents trust to heal their children, not to hurt them. Over the last decade alone, in states across the country, nearly 20 pediatricians have been charged with abusing children. Those are the criminal cases. Most complaints never get past state medical boards. Pediatrician Eli Neuberger is a professor at Harvard Medical School. He compares pediatric child abuse to the priest scandal that rocked the Catholic Church. We're dealing, I think, with a systemic problem and an organized cover-up. Just last October, pediatrician Michael Roy Sharp was charged with raping a patient, a teenage girl. He had been fired from two hospitals in Tennessee after accusations of sexual misconduct, but he was never disciplined by medical authorities and set up practice in Alabama. Colleagues of Dr. Robert Marion in South Carolina allegedly had heard complaints about him abusing children, but they simply asked him to leave the practice. He moved to another office in the same building and kept many of his same patients. They never knew about his predatory behavior until he was charged with abusing four children. If the perpetrator is one of their colleagues and reporting would ruin that man's life and career, they would much sooner not report even if it endangered children. There's a code of silence, and I think that code was upheld to the nth degree in this case. Attorneys Craig Karsnitz, Bruce Hudson, and Ben Castle represent parents whose children were allegedly molested by Bradley. They say doctors and nurses at Babies Pediatrics and at the local medical center knew or suspected that Bradley was abusing patients for years. Just one could have stepped forward, and all of the girls that were victims after that could have been spared. Child advocates hope the Delaware case will raise awareness about a problem hidden for far too long. Jan Crawford, CBS News, Lewis, Delaware.